Howdy folks, welcome to the official Minecraft tutorial. I'm going to show you how to install the project and play Minecraft with AI. This project is in pre-pre-alpha, it is fully in development, so this is a developer tutorial. It is just not easy to set up for normal people, I'm sorry. But it's not impossible, and it's not that bad if you have some programming experience. I'm doing this on Windows 10, it should work fine with Windows 11, but expect more problems on Mac OS or Linux. So first you go to the code, linked in the description. Here is the official readme with much more technical and up-to-date steps. Please double check the steps here as this video is bound to be outdated soon. Our first requirement is Minecraft, Java edition. We don't support Bedrock yet. And you will need a specific version of Minecraft, which you select in the launcher down here. But you'll have to install it first, so go to the installation tab and make a new installation. And currently the default supported version is 1.20.4, that's what I recommend as of the making of this video, but that is bound to change. I already have it installed, so the next thing we have to install is this thing called Node, which lets you run JavaScript programs on your computer. It's a pretty straightforward process, follow the link, download the installer, run it, and accept all defaults. Finally, we will need an API key, but I'll explain that when we need it. So after we get our requirements, we need to download the actual project. I recommend doing it the proper git way, clone the repository, but for the layperson, we're just going to download it directly. Hit this big green button up here and hit download zip, and I will save it to documents. This is a zipped folder, we need to right click and extract the folder. And now we have the code for the project right here. Our next step is to rename the keys.example.json file to just keys.json. That file is right here, but the .json is hidden for some reason, so I just renamed it to keys, again the .json is hidden, double check to make sure you're naming it correctly. And we need to edit the file itself in a text editor, so don't double click on it, right click and say edit and you can do this with Notepad, this is what the file looks like. I'm going to use VS Code, it looks much better, but you can use whatever text editor you want. This is where you put your API keys that give you access to different AI models. What is an API key? It is basically a password that you get from some company that proves you've paid to use their service through the internet, in this case, AI models. You only need one of these, and you can choose whichever one you want. Andy uses GPT by default, so I'll show you how to use OpenAI's API, but it's different for every company. You can find this link in the README, and once you've made an OpenAI account, you should see the ability to make a new API key. They'll generate one for you, it'll look like a bunch of jumbled text. Copy the key and paste it into the keys.json file for whatever API you're using. This is private information, do not share this key with other people. I'm not going to show you mine, but if you accidentally share it, you can always regenerate it. You have to pay as you use these models. The more you talk to them, and the better models you use, the more you have to pay. For OpenAI, you have to buy credits. They give you some credits for free, but they have a bunch of restrictions, so I recommend putting down 5 bucks, which should give you many hours of playtime. GPT models are pretty affordable and the most reliable. Also note that this is different from an OpenAI subscription, which only pays for normal chat, not for API usage. It's dumb, I know. But once you've pasted in the key, make sure you save the file, and we can move on to the hard part. You will need to open a terminal, like command line, or I will use PowerShell. This is the old-fashioned way of using computers, you write out commands here and run them. We can, for instance, check if we've actually installed Node by running node-v, which should give a number and not an error. Good. And the instructions say to run npm install, but when we do that we get a big fat error. That's because we are currently in this folder, which is the wrong one, we need to navigate to the folder that we downloaded, and we can do that with the cd command. So first get the file path for the Minecraft folder from File Explorer. We're in the folder, so highlight the path up here, Control c to copy, come back to PowerShell, type out cd, space, and paste the file path. In PowerShell you paste with a right click. Now we're in the right folder, and we can run npm install. This installs all of the code that we depend on. It takes a minute, but you only gotta do it once. Okay, it's finished. There are some warnings, but there's no big red errors. We are almost there. Now all we gotta do is open a game so our bot can join. So start a Minecraft world. 
hit escape, click open to LAN, and enter this number, 55916. It's kind of random, but it's just the default port. And say OK. The game's open, and the last step is to go back out to our terminal and run node main.js. This starts the bot program, and you can see its outputs. It's a little messy, but it's working. And Andy is here. Hello, Andy. At this point, you should be able to talk to him and do stuff with him. So that is the installation process for the default Andy bot that uses GPT. Okay, this sucks. I know it sucks. We will work to improve the process, but it will take some time. Please be patient. Real quick, I'm going to answer two really common questions. Can you use Baritone? Baritone is a completely different program from the MindFlayer bot framework that we use. It would not be easy to integrate the two. It would basically take a full rewrite of the entire project. If you want to do that, be my guest. I'm not even joking. Can you use mods? Yes, you can use client-side mods like Sodium or Optifine, but you can't use mods that change the game mechanics like Tekkit or Create. Now let's look at a super common issue. You go to run node main.js and no one joins and you get this econ refused error. This means the bot could not connect to the Minecraft game. So make sure you've actually started the game, you've opened it up to LAN, and that you're using the correct port number. This can also happen if you're playing the wrong version of Minecraft. So open up this file, settings.js, and you'll find a bunch of different project settings, including the expected Minecraft version. Make sure the version here exactly matches the version of the actual game you're playing. You can run into all kinds of different errors, check the program outputs to see what the error is. It can be very helpful. There's an FAQ for common issues, and you can also find help in the new Minecraft Discord server. This is a place for help for community and development. You can ask questions and post problems, and other people will help you out. I usually don't, I'm getting too many messages these days, but you can also ask our chatbot Andy questions about Minecraft. One of my mods made this bot, and it is awesome. It has access to the docs, so it should be able to help out, even though it's kind of dumb. In the server, you can also show off your AI builds and other cool things, and you can share your bot profiles so that other people can use your customized bots. Oh, right, let's explain customization. Let's say that instead, you want to play with Claude and have it build stuff. You need to add an Anthropic API key. I'll let you figure that out. Settings.js contains a bunch of basic controls that we need to change. This is the list of bot profiles that will join the game, except only Andy will join because the rest are commented out. They're ignored because of the two slashes in front. So I'll just uncomment Claude and comment out Andy. So now we're only loading up the Claude profile. These are file paths, by the way, to the profiles themselves. I'll show those in a second. And to enable building, we need to change this very important and scary setting. Allow insecure coding. You have to set that to true. Save the file, open up a world, make sure it's in creative mode, and start the node program exactly as before. Claude is now here and should be able to build. Very good. The allow insecure coding flag sounds scary because it is. This is what enables the new action command, aka the coding command, that lets the bot write and execute arbitrary JavaScript code on your computer. This lets it do very complex and creative things, but it also exposes your computer to whatever code the AI happens to write. Originally, this was extremely insecure. It could have literally wiped your whole computer. But the code is now sandboxed, thanks to this dude who contributed some cybersecurity expertise to the project. It should no longer be able to read or write files, connect to the internet, or start new processes. However, there are still known vulnerabilities. I'm not going to say what they are, but you only really need to worry about that when connecting to online servers with other people that could tell the bot to write malicious code. Bottom line is, do not allow coding on public servers. Otherwise, it's pretty damn safe when playing locally. Okay, if you want the bot to be able to build instantly with cheats, you have to open up the profile like andy.json or claude.json or whatever profile you're using. These contain the name, the AI model you're using, the examples, and the prompts that are fed to the language model. So by changing those, you can customize the bot's personality, its behaviors, and even make it smarter or dumber. These are the files that you can customize and share on Discord. Set this cheat thing to true and restart the bot. 
and they should be able to build instantly. Note that cheats must also be enabled in the game world too. Okay, this codebase is very volatile, it changes a lot, so you will have to update regularly. If you installed the proper git way, you can git pull and run npm install again, but sometimes we patch the packages, so you may want to delete the node modules folder entirely before running npm install. This gets you a clean installation. If you just downloaded the zip like I showed in this video, you're just going to have to reinstall from scratch. I'm sorry. Once again, you can always ask for help on Discord. My friend Colby and I are co-creators of Minecraft, and we are both very excited and a little overwhelmed by the popularity of this little side project. We are committed to keeping it open source. It's just so experimental that I think it would benefit most from open development and easy access for researchers. If you are a developer who wants to help improve the bot, join our Discord. We have an official to-do list that you can chip away at, but of course you can work on whatever you want, you don't need my permission. All of the attention is great, but to be honest, I'm struggling to manage it all. I am getting too many DMs and emails and pull requests, and I just can't respond to everyone. I've started to ignore a lot of messages, especially debugging questions, so please don't be offended if I don't respond. But the community support is there and should be self-sufficient. Go there for help. I will of course keep an eye on things and respond to big problems. For developers that have big ideas or pull requests, just be aware that I reserve the right to be blunt. I don't like most new ideas, and I don't like most new code, including my own. I'm picky, and I stand by that. Open source projects are especially vulnerable to being bloated with bad code and half-baked ideas. So I will be nice to people, but mean to your code. Please keep it clean and test thoroughly, especially if it's AI generated. Reviewing other people's code is also very time consuming, and I just can't be doing that constantly. Your pull requests will probably be up for a while before I get around to reviewing them. I will make time for them, but sometimes I'm just going to go dark for a while to work on things myself or just take a break. I love you, but I don't love talking to everyone all the time. I need some space. And since we're open source, if you don't like the way we do it, you can fork it and do your own thing. There are literally hundreds of forks of Minecraft at this point. You can even monetize it. You don't need our permission and you don't need to give us credit. I will say, it's a dick move if you don't give us credit, but that's up to you. If you want to support the project financially, you can join my Patreon. Oh, and be wary of scams. Some dude tried to pump a Minecraft cryptocurrency. I was not a fan of that. We do not support or affiliate with any crypto NFT schemes that use the Minecraft name. Long term, we have some pretty grand plans for this project. There's lots of things I want to do, and we're working on some big things behind the scenes but I want to hedge my bets here and say that this project is bound to be scooped, to be done bigger and better by someone else. I know other companies are making similar bots, they're probably watching this video right now. Hello. I'm actually very curious to see how their bots go, and I'm super curious to see how all of our bots might interact together. I know other YouTubers are working with these companies or using my bots for videos, that's fun to see. And as I say, there are many forks of our project that are developing off in their own direction without our input or control. And that is the point of open source. Anyone can build however they want. And ultimately, I think we will all be scooped by OpenAI or Anthropic or some major AI company. I know that OpenAI bought a Minecraft clone and has probably been building something similar for a while, and Anthropic's computer controller might eventually become so general that it could just play any video game natively. That would be really cool and a little scary. So I'm aware that I am in a fast-moving competitive space, and I'm trying to keep pace with it. I'm moving as fast as I can. but. I just want to play Minecraft with AI. I just want to have fun. I don't need to have the best bot, I don't need to own it, I don't need to be the first to do everything. I am not a fan of the move fast and break things philosophy. I think it's very possible to run as fast as you can directly into a brick wall. And while I think that competition can be very motivating, it can also have a stifling effect on creativity where everyone just rushes to build the same boring thing. I prefer to simply play around, to pursue interesting things because they're interesting, and to do so at my own pace. This keeps it fun, and I think that you can discover things this way that you otherwise wouldn't if you're rushing to some end goal. Play is essential for good game design. And because this is such a small, open source project, I'm in a unique position where I can afford to do that. I don't need to win the race to push a product to market. 
Of course, I will keep moving forward at a reasonable pace, but I will take my time to do things well and do them carefully. And if you don't like that, you don't need my permission to do it your way. I'm excited to see what will be built with Minecraft or similar projects, and we have some really cool things in the works. So stay tuned, good luck with the installation, and goodbye.